As we mentioned earlier, the Boone and Crockett Club is uh, helping us with a special presentation tonight by Shane Mahoney. Shane is a conservation mentor to many of us. He's addressed this body before, and so uh, we really appreciate BNC's help getting Shane to talk to us tonight. The title of his, his presentation is Our Permission to Speak. So without further ado, if Mr. Shane Mahoney, please join me on stage and welcome again, friend. There he is. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I want to say just a few brief words about what has probably been one of the most significant interventions in hunting in the course of our tradition. I need not remind you in the time of political turmoil in which we live that it is what a nation does in a time of crisis that determines its reputation and standing in the world. So too with organizations and with individuals. When the Boone and Crockett Club organized the National Collection of Heads and Horns at the New York Zoological Society Bronx Zoo in 1906, they were signaling to the American people that a crisis for wildlife was upon them and that how this nation responded would reflect its character and its worth. With unbelievable speed, ladies and gentlemen, the Serengeti abundance of America had been slaughtered and drained upon the altars of innocence, ignorance, and greed. A twilight of emptiness was replacing the exuberant fullness of the nation's lands and waters. The billions of passenger pigeons were on their way to extinction and the multitudes of bison were now just pathetic remnants. No one at that time in American history could doubt that the reason for this slaughter was hunting. Excessive, unregulated, profit-driven hunting. And this country asked itself what was to be done the debates over wildlife's future were already becoming polarized. Would it not make more sense, the country asked, to simply halt the killing of all wildlife and afford them complete protection, to give the preservation ideal front place in the future of wildlife? In an act of genius, however, there arose a new and a wondrous idea an idea that is the inheritance and legacy of every person in this room, listening or otherwise. And that legacy is the legacy of conservation, the wise use of wildlife and other resources. And for wildlife and for hunting, this meant a great turn in the road, where the emphasis would shift to a remarkable degree, not only on the motivations of individuals for hunting, but also on how hunting was to be conducted. Market hunting would end, and highly selective, fair chase hunting would be ushered in as the mechanism by which wildlife would be rescued and restored, and hunting would be reinvented from the scourge, from the scourge of wildlife to the savior of the resource. There were many opposed, but through the forces of will and public awakening, fair chase hunting will become the standard for the most successful wildlife conservation experiment in the history of the world, and it would become the heart of the North American model and a principle that would be exported from America to every hunting nation in the world. And we stand here today 
the beneficiaries of this. Because in your nation, the United States of America, there is enough firepower to eliminate every creature that swims or flies or crawls. And yet, you live in a land of wildlife abundance, and the world looks at your country as a land of wildlife abundance. I do not have to tell anyone in this room, you all know that hunting is under great and ongoing scrutiny. But I tell you, it is also undergoing a reawakening. And once more, once more, ladies and gentlemen, in this room, it is how we will react in this time of challenge that will determine our standing, your standing, in the world abroad and domestically here at home. Never before has there been so much at stake. We live in a changing world where well-organized organizations and groups hope to end hunting, and one where growing numbers of people are trying to truthfully understand what is this hunting phenomenon about. The rising empathy and fascination for wildlife, ladies and gentlemen, is everywhere and it is real. We have geckos that sell insurance, we have ducks that sell fertilizer, and we have penguins that book our hotels and sell us our vacations. And of course, and this is a message every one of us in this room should take to heart if you want to call yourself a conservationist. In many parts of the world, wildlife is disappearing, and it is disappearing rapidly. And there are species that your children will never see. And if that does not matter to you, then we are both in the wrong room. For all these reasons, earning our right to speak on behalf of wildlife is critical. Show us you care, the world demands. Show us not how you kill, but how you conserve, that we might understand the value of what you do. And thus, we may here this evening understand the modern relevance of how we hunt. It is significantly because of this fair chase tradition and its sister principles of selective harvest that we today that you in this room, sitting at these tables this evening, still have the opportunity to hunt at all. Do you really think for even a moment, do you think that for even a moment, you have the right to hunt by accident? You have the right to hunt because of those who fought for the right to hunt before you. Indeed, I would argue that the entire edifice of our hunting world today in the United States and Canada, our agencies and our NGOs, our laws and our policies, owe their very existence and their allegiance to this principle of fair chase and selective hunting. And this is why the Boone and Crockett Club's Hunt Right, Hunt Hard, Hunt Fair Chase campaign is so important, ladies and gentlemen. It is to remind us of our past, to signal our future hopes, and to make clear to us our responsibility to both. Future generations, the small humans, expect you in this room to safeguard their right and opportunity to hunt as your forefathers fought and saved that right for you. It is a sacred trust that you cannot deny. The conservation of wildlife has always required political applications, practical applications of science, laws, and policies. But so too, it has always required the intangibles of passion and love for nature. Hunting similarly requires rules and regulations. You know, those frameworks of legality 
but it also requires an ethic, one that can transcend species and geography and transcend human cultures, that all people of goodwill, that all people who care for the conservation of nature can abide by. And your country, your country, developed this ideal and sent it around the world. So for these many reasons, I join with hunters everywhere in saluting the efforts of the Boone and Crockett Club. The modern relevance of fair chase hunting, ladies and gentlemen, is a reminder to all of us that things of real value are not lost over time. They are not worn down by the debates in society. They are not lost because there are difficult roads ahead. But they stand ready always to support the good that mankind can do. And this concept of fair chase that has now been with us for almost a century, this has guided and given us relevance and given us acceptance in the society in which we live. You in this room, you members of the Wild Sheep Foundation, are the greatest ambassadors of this ethic by virtue of where you hunt, by virtue of what you hunt, and by virtue of how you hunt. There can be no challenge more thrilling, no landscape more enduring and overwhelming, because you, ladies and gentlemen, you get to hunt with the gods. So, this is why I so warmly welcome this opportunity to speak this evening. To stand before you and explain that you represent everything we need to win this fight we are in. I believe this year your organization, the Wild Sheep Foundation, will be welcomed into the IUCN, the World Conservation Union, which is the largest and most prestigious and most influential conservation organization in the world. This will happen because you stand first for conservation. It will happen because you believe in the application of sound knowledge to wildlife challenges and because you stand for the finest principles in the hunting world. Tonight, you and I, we see the confluence of two great hunting and conservation influences. Teddy Roosevelt's Boone and Crockett Club and their enduring presence. And you, the Wild Sheep Foundation, rising to ever greater heights of leadership and prestige. I consider it an honor to stand witness for and thank all of you for what you do, for wild places, and for the wild others who reside there. I tell you sincerely, the Wild Sheep Foundation is an example for the hunting world to follow. Thank you all, and I wish you well.